So, how was the first day of school? It was fine, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Did you guys pick up on that? Sure mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. We're gonna find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Inside Out's Riley isn't the only one who needs support. Nearly 20% of Americans have anxiety, another 10% have had a major depressive episode in the last year, and in 2022, there was an estimated 1.6 million suicide attempts. So what happens when one of those emotions drowns out all the others? The good news, after decades of major advances in decoding and mapping the brain's 86 billion neurons, we now know where the neural circuits underlying depression and chronic pain are usually located. However, cutting open the skull and physically manipulating delicate brain matter via brain surgery or deep brain stimulation with electrodes comes with significant risks and major price tags. So the question then becomes how can engineers access and treat deep areas of the brain in a precise and non-invasive way. One solution is sound. Loud noises! No, not just any sound. Ultrasound, the kind of sound that humans cannot hear. The kind that lets bats see the world and us see our first baby photos. But for researchers at the University of Utah, it has another purpose. Thomas Rees and Jan Kubinek created a new device called Diadem. Diadem, which comes from the ancient world where Greek Olympic victors or Roman battle victors would be awarded with a crown sitting on the head. And the Greek word for that was diadem. And this is what it looks like. It involves two ultrasound transducers that cover the left and right sides of the head. The device works by emitting sound waves, same sound waves as we're using right now, in a focused manner into the deep brain regions involved in depression, chronic pain, PTSD, and other disorders. So the same way you can focus light through a magnifying glass, you can do the same thing with sound waves. So the person experiences uh, two main events. The first event is an MRI scan. We want to make sure that we focus the ultrasound exactly into the brain regions that we would like to, because the ultrasound is highly focused. It can be almost grain of rice resolution. And so we are validating using MRI that the ultrasound is aiming into the proper regions. And that may take up to about an hour or less. Once we have the pictures of the brain, then we actually administer the treatment. So we have the patient lay down into the headrest and then we fit them with what's called like a thermoplastic mask and this is a plastic mask that conforms to the face and it starts really soft and it comes hard and it just locks the person's head in place. And then we start administering the treatments. We first probe brief stimuli so that the subject can tell us whether they tolerate it well. And if they do tolerate it well, then we stimulate for longer periods of time, up to about 40 minutes in total. When clinical trial subjects finished this step, they showed immediately clinically substantial improvements in symptoms. It's a really weird thing to go through. <laughs> after being like so heavy and dark and like anxious for so long and just having so much tension in your body to just have it like released. Of the 19 patients who completed the depression trial, 58% met criteria for remission within one week following just one stimulation session. Thus far, we have repeated the treatments only once and we have seen effects that last on the order of several weeks. And in the phase three, we are testing the hypothesis that if we administer the treatments four times, then there'll be some cumulative effects and the benefits can last even longer than several weeks, potentially months. And after the upcoming large scale phase three trials, all phases will be completed for FDA approval of Diadem. Reimbursement and scaling, those will be our challenges. We have co-founded a company called Spire Therapeutic that now aims to finalize the phase three clinical studies and also ultimately receive the FDA approval so that it's, this can be administered and scaled to people everywhere. I got a lot of text messages from people saying like I was really considering killing myself uh, in the next five years if I just didn't change things and like this stimulation sort of woke their brain up. So whether you're an adult like myself or a young girl like Riley, engineers at the University of Utah, Omar, you're dragging your feet. Introduce Inside Out 2 already and stop touching your ear. You're on camera. Roll the tape. Riley's officially a teenager now, which means more emotions. Orange? Who made the console orange? Do I look orange? I didn't touch orange it. Orange is not my color. Not me. Hello, everybody.
Hari. And if you enjoyed this week's episode of The Circuit, are you running a marathon? That's way too fast. Slow it down, dude. If you enjoyed this week's episode of The Circuit, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe for more amazing engineering news. You did it!